was with Colin Lamont. Good evening. As you may have heard in the national news, a 37-year-old businessman, Michael Knighton from the Isle of Man, is the owner of the company that today bought Manchester United in the biggest takeover in British football history. Altogether, the deal to buy one of the world's most famous clubs is worth about £20 million. Mr Knighton, whose company is called MK Trafford Holdings, moved to his luxury home between Douglas and Castletown earlier this year. At a news conference, he said he wants to restore United to the greatest club in Europe. Keith Macklin reports. Directors and officials arrived at Old Trafford this afternoon to hear that the reign of the Edwards dynasty is over. Manxman Michael Knighton was unveiled as the new owner, and at a press conference he explained why he had bought the club. Manchester United is a legend. It is <coughs> undoubtedly, in my view, the greatest football club in the world. And I think we all know the reasons as to why that is. Someone has already mentioned the purple era. There's been two, really. There's been Matt Busby and the Busby Babes and that great team which was so tragically devastated uh, at Munich. And, of course, there's been the Charlton Law Best era. Uh, what more can I say? Uh, wouldn't you like to own Manchester United? Just for me, please. please. So a driver's been killed following a crash in the borders. The victim's car collided with a lorry on the Greenlaw Road near Lodder. The lorry driver was treated for a neck injury. A man has been arrested and charged with sexual offences against a young girl in the borders. Police say the man, whose identity is not being released, will appear at Selkirk Sheriff Court. The biggest private sector building development ever seen in the Isle of Man was opened officially today. The £18 million office and shopping complex has been built by multi-millionaire Albert Gubbe. It's on the site of the old brewery at North Quay in Douglas, and it includes an 18th century listed tower which is incorporated in the new development. A new £20 million hotel and conference centre is planned for Dumfries. The scheme was put forward by a firm of Glasgow solicitors and involves building an hotel, conference centre, exhibition hall and motel on an area between the A75 and the railway line at Braswell. A turf-cutting ceremony marked the start of building work for new staff accommodation at Westmoreland General Hospital in Kendal. Health Authority Chairman Anne Graham did the honours, signalling the start of the million-pound scheme, which is part of the £23 million hospital project. Doctors in East Cumbria are experiencing shortages of typhoid vaccine following a big demand from holidaymakers going to Spain. The demand follows confirmation that 33-year-old Maryport engineer Brian Todd contracted the disease in Salou. However, there's no shortage of typhoid vaccine in West Cumbria. The Isle of Man government is bringing in strong new powers to prevent terrorists hiding their funds in the island's banking institutions. A new Prevention of Terrorism Bill will be introduced next year. It's expected to give the government power to search out and confiscate funds. Gambling machines could be banned from shops and cafes in part of southwest Scotland unless owners stop children from using them. The warnings come from Nithsdale District Council after pressure from parents. They're worried about children playing truant from school and spending their dinner money on the fruit machines. A 53-year-old man from the Eyemouth area in Berwickshire who's suffering from meningitis is satisfactory in hospital. He's been treated in an Edinburgh hospital. The Borders Health Board say it's an isolated case. Hundreds of people had a high-flying historical treat at Windermere today. A rare spitfire from the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight was put through its paces as part of an RAF show. The spitfire is an old photo reconnaissance model. It was rebuilt two years ago by British Aerospace and presented to the Memorial Flight. Quick look at the border weather now. It will be bright and then cloudy with possible rain showers tomorrow. Winds will be fresh and from the southwest. Temperatures will reach a maximum of 20 degrees Celsius. That's 68 Fahrenheit. The outlook until Monday, showers in many areas. That's it from us. Good evening.